I'll be talking a little bit, uh, bit of a different subject today, talking about finding computing in everyday things. And I think we're used to finding computing in these sorts of devices that we carry in our pockets and our purses. So I'm going to talk about something a little bit different, finding computing in places other than your pocket or your purse. Um, in terms of the importance of computing, I think uh, the, the first thing we can look at, we can look at these first uh, two quotes. By 2020, one out of every two jobs in the STEM fields will be related to computing. The other is uh, STEM fields uh, education in the fundamentals of computer science is key to a 20 first century workforce. So computing is important. We know it's, uh, it's relevant. We know there's a lot of jobs in computing. Uh, but one of the things I want to, the first thing I want to sort of suggest is that it's more than a technology. When I pulled my phone out of my pocket, everyone thought, well, computing is a technology. And it is a technology. But it's a lot more than that. It's a deeper thing than, than, than maybe uh, we, we think, or that we're led to think. Uh, so a couple of the things that I'd like to suggest is computing is the study of how information is represented and processed. So that's a key aspect of computing. It really defines what computing is. It's about information. Uh, the second thing is that we can see computing everywhere, and we'll see some examples. So the first thing I'd like to do is take the second word of the previous slide, technology and code. Code. I think a lot of us, uh, us has, have seen uh, that everybody should code, right? That's a, that, that's a phrase that I've kind of seen in the newspaper. Everyone should learn how to code. Coding is the next big thing. If you learn coding, then you'll know something about computing. Uh, and so, so code is something I'd like to start and talk a little bit about uh, to, before I go on with other examples. So this is an example of, uh, of some code that I wrote up. Um, how many people think this is abstract? Is this abstract? Raise your hand if you think it's abstract. I, I think, uh, OK, 65 people. No. <laughs> um, this is fairly abstract. I think most people would say it's abstract. When I first came here, um, there was some, somebody from the humanities, and she told me, she said, Paul, we go to the humanities to escape mathematics and computing. <laughs> so that, that's why it's almost like a, a, a magnetic like poles. Um, you know, repel each other. And it was almost that, that kind of argument. I thought, it's a little bit scary, you know, that we were actually repelling people, moving them away to some distant part of the university. Uh, but yes, this is an example of some code. And I, it's, uh, I won't go and bore you with the details on this, but we'll actually briefly come back to this in a second. So that's the, that's the kind of thing that I get a lot with, uh, so, so, with students that, that say, you know, I, uh, I can't stand this. I, you know, I've taken some stuff. I've taken, I learned about some code uh, somewhere. And it, this is just not right for me. I, it's not relevant, or it's, it's not appropriate. So I'd like to suggest uh, that hope is on the way. Speaking of hope, that was one of the previous, uh, in, in the previous TED talk, they talked about hope. I'd like to offer some hope that maybe it's not as abstract as, as, it's, uh, as, as we might think. So the first question is, uh, on our tail end of talking about coding, is can coding and computing be relevant for me? I mean me being you. Can it be relevant to you? Can it be made relevant for you? Well, the suggestion I would have for every, each and every one of you, I say, don't think about code in terms of print technology. Because normally when, when code is presented as an idea to you, it's normally presented as something that you do on a keyboard. So I think that's the first thing that we need to put aside is code is not just about the keyboard. And in fact, when you take it away from the keyboard and away from print technology, uh, it turns into something we call modeling. Uh, so coding and modeling are very, are very similar. And uh, a three steps that I'd like to suggest just to talk, to, talk today, I'd like to take a, a a snapshot of this room where, you in, where you're in and just say that there's a lot of information, there's a lot of computing going on in this room. Basically, the way that the chairs are organized, the way that the chairs are actually created, you can make a process, you can make a chair. And the process of making a chair is a form of, is a form of computing. Uh, it's an information process. There are things that computer scientists, there are structures in here that computer scientists use, things called arrays, 
Uh, when you move in and out of the auditorium, you're creating cues. If you bang up against a wall, just like being on the back of a bus or in an airplane, you're going to be the first in, but you're going to be the last out. We call that a stack. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on all in the auditorium that's very much computing related, and we can find that without ever having to actually take a keyboard out. Uh, second thing is, uh, I know some of you may have played Minecraft. If you're a Minecraft player, raise your hand. But like, more people raised their hand with Minecraft that were, um, thought the other thing was abstract. But that's OK, because Minecraft, there's a lot of places, a lot of things that you can learn within games like Minecraft. So Minecraft is not just a game, it's a culture. A lot of these games create cultures. And if we can bring computing concepts into those cultures, then we can teach computing in a way that's more familiar to those the people in the cultures. So that's, that's, uh, that's one of the things we do. But I suggest also, if you go to a park, that uh, computing is also in the park. Uh, that the, the, the flow, the flows that we have into a pond right here actually represent information. And so that's the key, again, for computer science is to see everything as information, either the structure of information or how information flows from one thing to the next. Okay? That's what computing is. Um, so in order to talk about computing in this light, we, I need to touch on abstraction. This is really important, I think. Because I think we, uh, we, we may think of abstraction in, a, in, a, in an interesting way, but it, it may not be as broad as, as it could be. So I think a lot of people would say, just like the code that I showed earlier, this is kind of, they think this is kind of abstract. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's something that's print technology, looks kind of abstract, but I would like to say that um, this, this is not really abstract. Instead, what we have to do is we, we're going to look at just two other instances, two other experiences. Let's say we go to a park, we see a couple of boulders, right? Um, well, we could say both boulders together makes two, right? And the same thing with this uh, picture that we show again from the park, the national park, where we have two streams of water, which we see as information coming together. Now, for two millennia, prior to the Second World War, Almost every single computer actually operated in an analog fashion, not necessarily by taking water and creating something as magnificent as a natural park, as a national park, um, but they, these kinds of computers were called analog computers. And they used, uh, they, they processed information in a slightly different way. So the key message here is that the code isn't abstract. This isn't abstract. Abstraction is what happens when you see that all of these three things are the same thing. You look at those three representations, these have these three experiences, and you say, after you've been taught you know, a little bit about what, what some of the things are in the abstraction itself, you say, you know what? They're all the same. That's abstraction. Okay? And so I think that gives hope to some of us that, that we think, oh, this, this thing is, is too abstract. Because it isn't. Maybe you just haven't been given enough opportunity to see multiple examples of phenomena that, went, that you can kind of link together and create this concept of abstraction. Um, so I, I would like to show you some other, some, some examples of finding computing everywhere. I'm going to show some historical examples, and I'll show you an example at UTD. Uh, this is a thing called a cam hammer, and was designed by Leonardo da Vinci in the latter part of the 15th century. What's interesting about this device, and this is a model I, I, developed, I created, and I've got this on my desk at ATEC, uh, but one of the things I like to show students when I talk about this, I like to say, you know, there's a lot of interesting stuff going in here in terms of computing. There's iteration, there's sequence, there's conditional branching. These kind of sound very abstract, and they kind of, they do have, they do have a bit of an abstract flair to them, but the key point is that a lot of the key things that we try and teach students about computing can be experienced viscerally with Leonardo's cam hammer. Uh, the computing concepts are in the cam hammer just like they're in something that uses uh, print media. And so I just bring this back. This is the, this is the code that represents a simulation of the cam hammer and uh, is more traditional, and I think, when we think of code. But uh, I would, again, come away from the talk maybe thinking, code, maybe it could be outside of the, of the printed box. 
Um, here's another example. This is a lamp in my home. So the, this is, uh, I, I see computing inside the lamp. I see it everywhere. I see it in the cam hammer. I see it in the lamp. And the way to think about computing here is in different ways, but the, I won't bore you with all these individual things, but there are different states that the lamp can be in. There's a wall switch. There's a switch on the wall. There's a switch underneath the lampshade. When you combine those two things together and you play around with them, you create something called an AND gate, which is something that every computer scientist has to learn. right? And so it's interesting, just as in Minecraft, we could experience AND gates within Minecraft if we like Minecraft, uh, we can also experience AND gates in the lamp. Uh, we don't need to do any, any typing on the keyboard. It's not necessary in order to at least intuitively understand what an AND gate is. Uh, this is just a, this is what we'd call a control model or a flowchart, and that defines what a person would do to turn the light on or off. And um, I sometimes eat lunch here. This is, the, this is our hub, the student, the student hub. And I, I was out leading, eating lunch one day. I think I was eating lunch at this table. And I said, you know, where's the computing? After all, computing is everywhere. That's my mantra, right? So uh, certainly I could see that there was a thing called an array, just like there's arrays here, right? We, there's an array, and the array represents the organization of information, which is to say all of you and all of the chairs, um, which is also seen on the side of this building and the structure and the way that the, the, the windows are organized and built into the, the, the side of the building. So we would say in computer science that's an array and we might make it look like that. Um, now what's even weirder is I see people as trees. Okay, and I know that's, that's a bit, bit odd. Everybody was gonna go, well, you know, that guy Fishwick is a little bit strange. He saw people as trees. But a tree is a very, is one of those abstractions that's very important to, to mathematicians and to computer scientists. We, in computer science, we, we get a lot from math. Okay? We kind of grew out of mathematics and uh, uh, in the 20th century, electrical engineering. So that's what the tree looks like. And actually, if you are going to make a game and rig a character, all the, mo the movies you see where you've got the synthetic characters, you have to think in terms of a human as a tree. Because if you don't, you can't, rig the, you can't do the character rigging. Um, so that's an example of, of, of that. Um, but you can also think of something like the table as being a process, an information process. The way I look at tables as being information is I say, how is the table built? Okay, this, I'm going to show you just two slides on uh, old technology, but old computing. This is one of the earliest computers, and it uh, showed the position of the sun and the moon over time. It's called the Antikythera mechanism from around 100 BC. And they, they dug it, they basically took it out of the water. And this is a model of that. But the key point is that this is a computer that was built over 2,000 years ago. And so by studying it, you learn coding, modeling, computing in a slightly different way. Uh, this automaton was the basis of the movie Hugo. It was actually the basis of the book by uh, Selznick, and then uh, Martin Scorsese actually used Selznick's book on Hugo Cabre for the movie Hugo, but there's a lot of fascinating computing going on in the background right here. And what I'd like to just leave you with is there's three thoughts, okay? One is that code is not about just print media. If we think of code as modeling, any material can be used, and you can find computing in all kinds of different places. Abstraction is not a quality of an object. It's a process that you go through by seeing that many different things are, in fact, the same thing, okay, at an abstract level. And also, uh, the last thing is that computing is about the flow of information, and we can see it everywhere.